Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, a developer advocate at Dremio, and this is another video in this hands-on iceberg series. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to connect uh, Minio and the Nessie catalog to Dremio. And this is specifically using the Nessie connector in Dremio software. If you're using Dremio Cloud, then you'd want to use a Dremio Arctic catalog, which is sort of like a a cloud managed version of Nessie. So in that case, it, you won't even have to set up any settings; it'll just be integrated into cloud naturally. So you won't even, you just literally say, Hey, I want a catalog and it exists. Okay. And you would just be able to use it with spark in the same way that we use Nessie with spark just a moment ago in the previous videos, but you would have it heavily integrated into your Dremio cloud account in Dremio software. You would have a, your own standalone Nessie catalog or a Dremio Arctic catalog that can be connected via this Nessie connector. Okay. But since we're using, well, let's first walk through one step at a time. Okay, so let's start adding the Nessie source. I'm gonna add a Nessie source. So this is assuming you're using Dremio software. So if you're following this guide, we are using that sort of Docker container with Dremio. Okay, and actually just to point out while we're there, there's a lots of other things you can connect. So feel free to connect any of these other sources to your local running Dremio. If you wanna kinda of just basically work with all your data in one place, that's one of the nice things about Dremio. You can kinda of connect from several different places and kinda of have all your data working together in one place across clouds and so forth. But again, we want to connect Nessie here. Okay, and in this case, we'll call this our Nessie catalog. Why not? And then we're going to want to put our Nessie endpoint URL. Okay, so for that, we can just copy it back from like our Spark settings. So I'm just going to head back to my notebook over here and copy it from right here. Okay. The only difference here is that you want to use the V2 URL for Dremio. So Dremio is basically its implementation. You takes advantage of the V2 uh, endpoint. Since we are using our local Docker container that has no authentication, we'll use none. If you were using like Dremio Arctic or a, your own uh, Nessie server that does have authentication, you can choose bare. That's for the token auth. And then you would put the token right here. So for like Dremio Arctic, you would in your Dremio cloud UI, you would generate your personal access token and put it right here. Okay, so that goes there. And so that's it. That's it for it connecting to the catalog. That's all it needs. The issue is whenever any engine, so remember like when we were in Spark, we had to configure the information about the catalog. We also had to kind of pass it information about Minio. Okay, because the thing, the lesson to learn here is that any tool working with your iceberg tables, it needs access to the catalog of tables and it needs access to the storage of the tables, which are two separate things. So in this case for Dremio to be able to also be able to write and manipulate that data and find it, it needs to have access to where the data is stored. So this tab here allows us to pass it credentials for where our data is stored. Okay, so we're going to pass in our access key and secret access key. Okay, so I can just go again, grab those from my previous notebook over here. So here's my Minio access key that we generated earlier. Okay. And then here's my Minio secret key that we generated earlier. Okay, cool. And then you have to pass it a path, just as, which is just gonna be warehouse because that's gonna be where we've been storing all of our data. Okay, if I pass it no path, then you'll just see all your buckets, which is fine if that's what you want to. Now you don't want to encrypt the connection because right now, since we're running Nessie locally, that particular container isn't behind like an SSL certificate and SSL connection. So we're gonna say, nope, we don't wanna encrypt the connection. And that's it, that's all it takes. The only other things we need to do because it's specifically since we're using Minio, we need to tell it, hey, we're not connecting to AWS. So we need to kind of pass a few other settings. I do have those documented in this blog that I wrote. Okay, so again, let me just show you the name of the blog in case you wanna look this up, it's on dev.2. Um, basically, this is a lot blog where it kind of shows you how to set up this kind of setup uh, locally and walks you through an exercise of ingesting data and, and querying it in Dremio, um, which is essentially what we're doing right now. But again, essentially those Nessie settings are going to be right here. So we kind of did most of it. We just have to set up these custom settings. So first off, we have to set up this fs.s3a.pass.style.access to true. Okay, so I think I have those listed right here just for quick copying and pasting fs3 s3a that path that style that's going to set it up just so that way is using uh, s3's com uh, dynamic pathing okay which is going to be needed for using minio okay the other setting that we need to have is going to be the compatibility mode so dremio.s3.compat that sets up dremio to be to be able to use s3 compatible storage 
Okay, so we're going to set that to true. And then we're going to set the URL. Okay. Okay. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to copy that last one, which is the URL, which that setting is right here, fs.s3a, that endpoint. And that's basically going to point to our Minio URL. So that's going to be the same one we set for uh, Spark. So again, these are the same kind of settings we set up for Spark. It's just we're doing it in a slightly different manner. Okay. And then again, I can copy that over from our Spark settings. So here we're pointing to Minio there, 9,000. Cool. And then that's it. Okay. So then I should be able to hit save. And what it's going to do, it's going to test out the connection. So I'll get an error if I missed any of the settings. Okay. I'll hit save. But if everything works out well, I'll have a, my Nessie connection which that all worked out well. And see, I can see all my tables. So like right away, all my iceberg tables that I created while I was in Spark are immediately visible. Okay, so this makes for a really nice sort of pipeline. So again, I can go take that DF open 2023 and I can immediately go run a query, query on it using Dremio. Okay, and again, this is using my local compute. So it's not gonna run as performant as you were running a full enterprise uh, Dremio uh, cluster um, on a you know much more powerful computer. Same thing with Spark, like the queries are going to be reflective of the of the machine that we have them on. But uh, yeah, this will run. And I will pause this for a moment. Ha. Okay, just to point out, I made a mistake. And that was so basically what was happening is that it was contacting my catalog just fine. So I was able to see all my tables listed. But when I tried to access the metadata from storage, you couldn't access the metadata because I passed it the wrong information. See right here where I pass in the, the, the URL, I don't need the HTTP. It should just be Minio 9000. Okay, so if I fix that, that should make everything work better. Okay, so let's go first now, let's go run the test table and let's see if I, it'll read it now. And now, yeah, it looks like it's it's running much better. Okay, and there it goes, it's done, it, it queried the table. Okay, so you can see I can query those tables that were created in Spark. So all the queries, all the work was done in Spark, and that's the beauty of Iceberg. By having this sort of uniform format, I get this very database like performance across multiple tools. Um, and again, I can just do everything in SQL. Basically, I just when I look at Nessie, I don't see a sea of files, I see a sea of tables. Okay, when I look at my catalog, it allows me to interact with all my data as in a more databasey way versus if I just connected sort of like a, a object storage, which I could connect my Nessie source, which is what we'll do next. I mean, my uh, Minio source. So I'm gonna now connect Minio. So if I go to the sources again, I'm gonna click add source. And this time I'm gonna add Amazon S3 storage because Minio is a S3 compliance storage layer. Okay, if I click here, then we're gonna say Minio. Okay, once again, I'm gonna copy my S3 key from over here. So again, from the Minio keys that we generated earlier. Okay, boom. Boom. Again, I'm not going to encrypt the connection because it's not there. And then here, we're going to put all those other settings here. So we're going to enable compatibility mode. Awesome. But we still need to set up those other uh, those other settings. Okay, so which I do have listed in this file here, the settings we need to do. So it's the same, same settings we set up before. Okay, so that's going to be style access true, and then fs three dot endpoint, and then this is going to be our minio. Okay, let me just double check this this syntax for that. In that case, I'm I do want it to be yeah, again without the HTTP. So in that case, it would just be like minio nine thousand. So go back to Dremio. So that will be Minio 9000, because again, we can use those namespaces. Um, and that's good. And again, you want to put the root, root path. So if I leave it there, it's going to show me all my buckets, um, which I, I might just leave that way. Okay, the other thing you want to kind of keep in mind is, no, that's, that should be it. Okay, um, cool. And then it's going to be the default CTAS format. So if I write any tables to my Minio directly, it's going to write them in iceberg format. The only difference is it just won't be listed in my Nessie catalog. Okay. And then I go here. See, I can see all my iceberg tables. And the cool thing is I could still read them as iceberg here. 
Now you generally shouldn't be using multiple catalogs. So technically when I do it this way, it's called um, a Hadoop catalog. That's, that's what's referred to when you use a file system as your catalog. Okay. But I, what I can do in Dremio is I can take any of these folders since they are an iceberg table. I can click right over here and click format folder and Oh, it, it recognizes that it's not built with a Hadoop catalog. So that means it has to be written specifically with Hadoop catalog. But if you wrote it, so like, for example, if you're ingesting with Airbyte or you enjoy ingesting with like Fivetran, generally they're going to use Hadoop catalog to write iceberg tables directly to uh, S3. And then you would just click like right over here and you can convert those folders with a table into that, into an iceberg table. Okay, but since these were written using a catalog like Nessie or a more formal catalog, a non-file system catalog, I access it through the catalog. Other catalogs that Dremio supports are AWS Glue. So you can read table, uh, iceberg tables through AWS Glue. Other are other catalogs. Like for example, if you're using Tabular's catalog, you can actually sync your tables on Tabular to AWS Glue. Um, so that way you can read them in Dremio as well. Um, in the future, there will be REST catalog support. Um, there's Hive. So if you have iceberg tables that are using Hive catalog, you can read them through there. Any of the object storage would be through Hadoop catalog or on Hadoop itself. Um, yeah, so basically you have those options currently as far as like uh, ways to kind of connect your iceberg tables to Dremio. But of course, the benefit of Nessie is you get those branching. And then right here, I can actually take see all the branches that I created in Spark, which is pretty nice. Okay, and I can go actually go query the data as it was during those commits. Um, so I can go here, click on this branch. I can see the list of different commits and say, hey, I want to query the data at that particular commit, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great one. Enjoy.